This is just, again, to summarize that idea about type properties and instance properties, where you need to avoid mismatches between a label on an object or a fixed expectation on the object and the ability for a user somewhere on the project to vary a piece of information that you're expecting to be fixed and accurate. It improves data consistency and data quality to get in that understanding. And if you need to explain to users, you know, this kind of thing, it's well worth your while to sort these problems out before you carry on. So, like I said, I'm going to talk a little bit about definitions, okay? Okay, so on the video that you're seeing then, what I'm doing here is I'm using the catalog editor to actually create a custom catalog. So there's a little dialog box that allows me to create a new catalog type and it gets stored as an XML file. And you can store this XML file within your project or you can store it within your workspace. and it will be available to all of your project users or workspace users. And you can set various items. So, for instance, you can select the tool that is going to be used to place that object. You can associate it with a particular discipline like architecture, etc. But then what you can do is you can then go and select the properties that are going to be associated with that catalog item. So. I've created my catalog type. And again, in the catalog editor, once I've created it, I can see information about what properties it's currently carrying in terms of the labels and the property definitions. I can see where the XML file is stored. And I can then keep a track of that and make it available to my users You know, the next time that they refresh or update their application. Yeah, either on startup or with the reload or refresh catalogs button on, on the application. So we've created a catalog type. We then might need to create some custom property definitions. So you may have a client that has a particular way of describing assets that they're going to own and manage down the line. And what you need to do is create some custom parameters or attributes to hold that information so that you can report on that or you can extract data lay, lay down. So we have a little standalone application called the Data Group Definition Editor. It allows you to create, edit, and rename definitions. Again, word of caution here is be careful about the strategy you use to do this. You want to be very specific about when you do this because there is an impact that I'm going to talk about and illustrate later on for you. So again, it's a simple XSD file. It's a text file. So you can use text editors like Notepad++ to edit them and copy and paste and things like that, if you are confident doing that. But we give you a graphical user interface to do that as well as a means of controlling that. Now, it's worthwhile mentioning that the definitions, there are certain definition lists, certain lists of properties that we deliver with the application that are essential to the way that the application works. These XSD files are not stored in the configuration folder or the workspace order area. They're actually stored on your C drive or wherever you've installed the program, and they are embedded inside the application folder structure itself. We would prefer for you guys not to edit those because it might impact our object definitions and some of our standard functions and behaviors. I'm using the word preferred 
rather than an emphatic, don't do this. Okay. But what we have is we have plenty of other opportunities to look at the way you organize yourselves, whether you're working on multiple projects inside of OBD or a single project inside of OBD. So you can see we provide opportunities at work set level and workspace level where we've got a data group system folder that you can create either, you know, workspace specific properties that you can apply to across all of your projects within that workspace, or you can do it at work set level and it's just self neatly contained within one particular project or work set for you to use. When it comes to the data set level, we obviously deliver data sets with the application. So here I've just highlighted the data set neutral metric, and there is an opportunity for properties in that particular data set. We obviously follow our recommended advice that whenever you deploy Open Buildings Designer, in your organization, you create a company specific data set that acts as the root for all of your projects. Because if we update the application, you know, we release a, a new version like update nine, update 10, et cetera, we're going to update the data set level. And potentially the data set level can be overwritten or even replaced. So we always encourage companies and organizations to create their own base root data set so that they're isolated from any changes that we make in the delivered data sets. So properties, some tips and information about properties. The property or parameter name cannot use spaces or special characters. And that's the name that is hidden from the user, but it's used by the application to find all of these files. What the user sees is the display name, and that can be a user-friendly name. It can have spaces. It can have special characters. The way that you get to the definition editor is from the backstage, and what it allows you to do is obviously create different kinds of parameters, You know, parameters that might be lists, they might be numbers, they might be integers, they might be a simple you know, true-false kind of presentation. You can see here, it can also be a classification. It can be date and times. It can be web URL, et cetera. There are all kinds of different properties that we can carry on objects. And the data group system will allow you to create those. And you can build groups of properties. So like I say, if you have a list of properties from the client, you can create a client group of properties with individual definitions inside that group, and it will appear as a table in the interface. So we, we deliver all of these out-of-the-box groups of properties, and you can see those groups and the color groups on the left-hand side, but we mix and match them together to build a complete picture of an object definition. So I don't need to create a width value for walls only. I can create a generic, well, we deliver out of the box, a Bentley property for width, depth, and height. And we apply that to a large number of our out-of-the-box catalogs. And you can reuse those you know, pre-existing definitions in your new catalogs as well. But you can see on each definition of an object, there are different types and groupings that give you that complete picture of the item. And you'll notice down here at the bottom in the, the purple area, there is a project-specific uh, purple property that is applied to that object. So you can see we can concatenate all of these list properties to build that picture. So that's very powerful, that ability to build your own schemas. When you build a new catalog and you assign properties, it creates a tracking file that says, oh, this particular catalog now has the client properties added to it. And these are, we create that tracking file because it supplements what it comes out of the box. So any changes that you make, we call them catalog type extensions. We're adding properties, we're extending the property schema 
for that catalog. And those get filed in the data group system folder as well. So you will see XSD files and you will see these data group or catalog type extension files that say these are the extra custom properties added to these existing catalogs. They might be custom catalogs, they might be delivered catalogs. Now, the reason for that, and I'm going to show you in this video. So here I've got a model and I've got some existing items in it. When I look at the properties of that object, you can see at the bottom of the list, it ends up with a group of properties. But what I want to do is I actually want to create a new property definition. Call it my custom properties. And I know it's a fairly generic example here. And what I do is I create two properties within that property group. One is just a simple string value. You know, it can be a, it's just there to hold a piece of text. The second one is a list. It's a predefined list that the user can't edit. You know, I just put in a couple of values into that list so that that list is fixed. I then save that property definition. And it's saved, you know, those XML files are updated. They're written into the correct locations for me. And then what I can then do is go to my, the catalog that I want to attach that new set of properties going to. I look at the properties for that catalog. I find my custom properties in the left hand window. And I assign them by moving them into the right-hand window. And again, I save the changes. When I close the window, it goes and updates the system. And any new placement that I make, any new instance of an object from that catalog, automatically has those properties available in the placement dialog box. But hang on a second. What if I go to an existing catalog item from that catalog that is in the wall, it doesn't have those custom properties on it. There is a very specific reason for this. When we place an object into a file, the property schema is written onto the object. It is separated from the application schema. That's why we provide the data group upgrade utility that scans the file finds object types, compares the schema on the object with the schema in the application, and synchronizes them so that now pre-existing objects now carry those additional properties that I've created. And so I can now look at going into my schedules window and then filling in those missing properties that are relevant to that object. And I'm just choosing from that drop down list and applying it to those values, and I've updated it. So it's a powerful way to actually make sure that you've got attributes assorted. If you're getting information late in the day that you need to add to objects, you can, there is a, a workflow that allows you to do that. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.